Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. It's the store that has everything for photographers and videographers and video editors like you and me. Well, this is the last part of my series on video editing basics for people that don't know anything about editing video, specifically in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2017. That's what I'm gonna be using. But we can take all these principles that we've learned and you can apply it to Final Cut Pro or any non-linear editor. So make sure you watch the other episodes of this series to really get an idea of what we've done. Well, we finished a project. It's called My Muddy Adventure. And the uh, task now is to get that video and output it in some way so that other people can watch it. Get it to YouTube or Vimeo or out to your Android or iPhone or tablet, whatever it is, how do we do that? Well, this part, fortunately, is really easy. And it used to be really complicated because there's so many different settings and things to do and well, we don't have to really know about any of that anymore because of the magic of Adobe Media Encoder. So let me show you how this works. In Adobe Premiere, here is the big project. It's all done. I've watched it back and forth and made sure I don't have any errors, which always I find them after we publish them. But let's pretend it's perfect. So what we can do now is we can go into File, Export. And what we want to do is say Export Media. Now it's really important before you do this, make sure, remember, beware of the blue box. Make sure that you have selected the timeline that you want, My Muddy Adventure, and that you have clicked on the timeline. So the blue box is surrounding your timeline. If it's on something else, this might not work correctly. So make sure it is on your timeline. So once you've done that, File, Export, Media. And so once you click that, this dialog box shows up for export settings. Now here's where it gets really fun and easy. So on the left-hand side, it says Scale are the source range. So if you've set an in and out point, you might want to use an in and out point on your timeline, or just say entire sequence if you want to be safe. That gives everything. Um, you can preview this in a small window on the left-hand side by going through to sort of see what it's going to do to your video once you make all the changes on the right. You don't really have to worry too much about this stuff. You can learn more about that later if you choose. You don't really have to worry about it. On the right hand side, this is what you're gonna convert your video to. So what kind of file do you want in the end? So almost always on the top here where it says format, you're going to want an H.264 file. That's what the internet uses, that's what, what most phones use. If you want a higher resolution movie or you wanna do something in an animation software or something, you might wanna choose one of these different formats. But my guess is if you don't know what one of these is, you're not gonna use it. H.264 is the format that you're going to want to choose 90% of the time. So click on that. Underneath there, there's a preset. So Adobe has created all of the different formulas that you need to easily get these out to where you want it to go. And you can see as you scroll down, you've got settings for the Amazon Kindle and Android phones and Android tablets, the Apple TV, uh, iPads, Barnes and Noble, the Nook, HD video in different formats. At the very bottom down here, there are two that we use all the time. Vimeo 1080p and YouTube 1080p. YouTube always can go all the way up to uh, 4K video, which is really nice. We're gonna use YouTube 1080p. So if you want a high definition video on YouTube, then choose YouTube 1080p. Now what we can do here is we can click on your output name this is gonna tell us where we want to store this. So I've got a folder called Mark on a Bike 1080p, and I'm gonna change this to My Muddy Adventure. By default, it chooses the name of your timeline, of your sequence, but I've already output this once before, so it's there. So I'm gonna change this to My Muddy Adventure. And so once I have that, I can click Save. And then you have two choices. On the bottom, there is Export or Q. If you click export, then Adobe Premiere Pro is going to do all of the work to export this video. And so you don't need Adobe Media Encoder. Uh, Adobe Premiere Pro can just do this. The bad side is as soon as you do that, well, Premiere is locked up. You can't use it until it's finished. And so it's much better to click Q and use Adobe Media Encoder because when you do that, it's going to open Adobe Media Encoder 
It's going to take a couple of seconds, but it's going to take your entire timeline. It's going to throw it over to Adobe Media Encoder. There's a bunch of things you can do in Media Encoder, by the way, but we're not going to get to that. But it's going to build a queue. And so you could actually edit four or five or six or 10 different videos, sequences, and then you can just throw them into Media Encoder and say, you know what, when I go to sleep tonight, do your job. And so that's what a lot of people do. They'll build a queue of different videos and then later on when they're not using their computer, they don't need it for anything, then they can click the start queue button. And once you do that, then the magic happens. Adobe Media Encoder is going to kick in and it's going to start encoding your video for your final output. Depending on your computer speed, how much memory you have, how fast your hard drives are, all of that kind of stuff, this could take anywhere from a few minutes to an hour or two. And so that's why some people queue that up. If you're using Adobe Media Encoder, the nice thing is you can go back to Premiere and you can close it. You can quit Premiere altogether. You can say, go away. It's going to say, you want to save that? Sure, I'll save it. And then you don't even need it. Or you could start working on a new project, whatever. But this is just going to work in the background to create that video. Once you have that, then you can take the video and you can upload it to Vimeo or YouTube or send it to friends or transfer it from iTunes to your iPhone or tablet or drag and drop it to your Android. Whatever you want to do, it's done and it's that simple. All right. Well, I hope you've learned quite a few things on our series of video editing basics. Now, you've probably gotten an idea that there is a lot more that we didn't talk about, and that is absolutely true. We could spend hours and hours and weeks, actually, on video editing and the practices and principles and the tools and the techniques. And so if you want more video editing videos, then let us know in the comments, and then we might start making specific videos about specific applications. I know some of you want Final Cut Pro, some of you want Vegas, some of you want uh, Adobe, I mean, uh, um, Blackmagic, uh, DaVinci Resolve and some of those applications. And so maybe we have some experts that could help you out, but let us know in the comments. And so if you tell us, we'll start making some of those videos for you. So thanks so much for joining me for this series and this episode. I hope you will subscribe to Adorama TV. That way you don't miss a single episode and I will see you again next time.